So here we are, and welcome to this episode of a live chat. And I have some amazing local legends. My name's Doug DeJong, and these are real musos on the ground doing well. They used to be doing gigs about two weeks ago, and we're going to go around the table here today. So maybe first up is Licia. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what you might do? Yes. Well, my name is Licia Louise. I've been performing live for over ten years. Um, recorded a bunch of CDs. I've done tours overseas, Europe, America. Oops touch my face hong kong australia um and yeah basically i'm a i'm a musician and that's been my form of income i've done some teaching as well so yeah like many i've lost all of my work through the covid19 situation right and uh okay cool and we might cut to scotty if you want to maybe uh let us know what you might do there we go is you in scotty uh i do all sorts of weird and wonderful things um which I, might I, be <laughs> <laughs> uh I, I i i do a cover band uh and that does pub gigs pub gigs i also do uh corporate events up to with a five piece eight piece 12 piece and everything in between um my main income has been corporate gigs uh over the last few years but i still do i still do gigs in pubs and clubs that's, that's to, to some degree the bread and butter bits and pieces but um, I've also run a recording studio and uh, do uh, play in a, a, a Fleetwood Mac tribute band as well. And uh, oh. what do I do? Uh, I, and every now and then I'd, be a, I'd go off and be a hired band and play with uh, weird and wonderful people. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. Yeah, Very good. I, yeah. And we're uh, going over to Johnny here. Johnny, you want to tell us what you might do? Here we go. Hello, everybody. My name is Darren Hinch and I'm a human <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, look, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I'm a Freddie Mercury impersonator. I've been involved in the industry now for about um, uh, about 25 years. I uh, got my first kind of real break working out at Movie World, sort of um, did all different types of roving characters and things of that nature. And, uh, yeah, basically um, been involved in bands and cover bands for um, most of my adult working life. Um, I've had the opportunity to perform in... Oh, all different places around the world, Singapore. Um, oh, I, I just come back. From, yeah, I, I did a, a, um, a documentary based on Freddie Mercury's life uh, in London. That was the very first time I went to the UK. Uh, what else? I don't know all different types of things, but it's mainly been based around the whole uh, tribute um, show, which I've been involved with for my, probably for the last, I guess, probably 19 years. Yeah. And okay. um, yes, yeah, since, since the movie came out, the Bohemian Rhapsody movie, we were able to, uh, very grateful and very fortunate enough to uh, get a real shot in the arm with that and to um, to do all that. I mean, it's been great. Congratulations, and, by the way. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so, I mean, it was only a couple of days ago I was drinking Guinness and now I'm drinking this shit. So uh, that's how bad things have got. That's how bad things have got. <laughs> so maybe, uh, or just if we uh, just quickly go around uh, maybe what kind of work that we're missing out on now maybe Lisa do you want to start with that what kind of work hey Matt yeah sure g'day um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry I was uh, sharing it um, <laughs> I get share frenzy when I get going <laughs> that, that's share, good share, share. please share away I think someone's <laughs> mic's got a someone that might be Johnny's mic is it I keep you. talking hello Where's Johnny's yeah yeah cool keep going all right. So, um, all <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. good. All right. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah, uh, a few weeks ago, I started getting the emails and texts, um, you know, gigs off for this weekend, next weekend, next month, uh, next month. Um, so, um, it, you know, it's interesting. I don't have a whole year booked out. I'll have a few months booked out, but I'll have little bits and pieces booked for maybe January or, or September or, or something like that. But then the next three months, I'll be pretty, I'll pretty much know what I'm doing. So um, I'm just taking it week by week, month by month. And um, so some people have pushed their festivals back that I was booked to play in June to November. We've booked it in, but we don't know. Uh, another one has been pushed back to September. We'll wait and see, but yeah, it's just a bit, bit of a waiting game and any teaching now and then I do some fill in teaching and at schools, which I haven't done since last year anyway, because I was on the road for a couple of months earlier in the year and um, I was getting my focus on with with that. But um, it's handy to be able to teach in between those tours. And that's there's no way I was going to go and deal with hundreds of people every day um, yeah. and plus schools off now anyway. 
So cool. basically, and I have zero. <laughs> you so you have uh, zero gigs at the moment, right? Zero. Okay, cool. And then, uh, Scotty, what kind of workload has shifted for yourself? Oh, uh, well, in the I think about the first week or second week of June, uh, I had a whole bunch of corporate stuff that uh, fell through, and I thought I'd still have um, a whole bunch of pub gigs. Um, there was a bunch of stuff that the, the venues that were still open. Hey, Jamie. Yep. I probably lost. There's probably about I, I calculated it in the first week, and it was over a hundred k's over about over a hundred k's worth of gigs. Um, wow. wow! Cancelled in that first week, and there's still a couple okay. more being cancelled. I thought I thought we might be getting back into it. I was sort of hoping we might be getting back into it maybe August September, but uh, yesterday I had a national conference for. Uh, Leagues Clubs Australia that was booked in in November and that got that's been cancelled because they they're basically from what they've been told that they won't be running any um events of that. So cor corporate events are generally large scale crowds and uh, once yep. they start rolling this back, from what I understand, it'll be done in a in reverse reverse mode. So it, by the time the large scale events are allowed to happen again, it, we could be looking this time next year or later. Yeah. We yeah. don't really know. That's the, that's the hardest part about this is that unknown. But yeah, I I I, I pretty much lost six in, in that first week in March when that happened. I, I pretty much lost uh, six months worth of corporate work. And um, I mean, the hundred k is not necessarily in my pocket. Which was gross figures here, and I've got like a whole bunch of band members to pay and stuff. So, but but because I run it, that's what would, that, that's the income that I would have seen. Then had obviously the net. My, yeah. I haven't lost that amount of money in, in a net sense, but um, it's just, it's a, and there's. You know, having conversations with uh, other people about, I mean, there's people that are losing a hell of a lot more than, than that. And that's the scary thing is this, the, um, the, how much money actually does circulate through the industry. It's, it's, it has a massive on, ongoing, an on flow effect. So it, it affects yeah. all the guys that I work with and the, the, that work for me. Um, I'm still so lucky. I've got a little bit of income still coming through the studio. Um, yeah. And I, it's just drip and drabs. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not really. But games. I guess it's it's a real story, right? So it's a knock-on effect. It's not just you taking a hit. It's the people that you support through the business that you have. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, it, it, the, the, there's not a. It's sort of a weird situation too, where there's not a lot of real full-time musos anymore. I mean, I am a full-time muso. I my whole life is around music, whether it's. There's a little bit of yep. studio stuff, but it's pretty much right. my main my main income is gigging. Um, yep. And all the okay. guys that I work with, uh, a few of them have a full time are full time musos, and they do yep. have other income besides the income that I give them. But I mean, a few of them are also lucky that they have other streams of income, so they haven't been as hard oh, as, yeah. as bad. <laughs> okay, well, that's, if it has that's... consequences, it's my main, um, yep. You know, like uh, Michael Clark, who, who works with me, and he's a, uh, he, he has a day job working at the convention centre in Brisbane, and they were sent home last week. So he was, up until last week, he was thinking, oh, everything's going to be okay. But, I mean, it's a convention centre. Yeah, And right. that pretty much, that's pretty yeah, much been shut down. So, yeah. Well, um, we'll, we'll, just, well, well, before we talk about that, I'll just finish. Oh, pointing the wrong way. There we go. Johnny? Sorry, Scotty. Uh, it's like a uh, just, <laughs> I'm going to get used to this. It's all pointing different yeah, ways. Funny if I can point. Yeah, yeah. So, Johnny, can you please tell us what uh, kind of work that, you know, because you're actually doing stuff internationally, what kind of stuff have you missed out on with this? Well, when it, when the, the news come through of the virus, I mean, most of us were uh, of the same opinion that everybody else was uh, when we've seen these types of um, crisis before where uh, we saw the swine flu Yep. And everyone was like, oh, gee, that's going to be frightening. And then it kind of disappeared. The bird flu kind so, of disappeared. Uh, SARS, SARS? Yeah. yeah, I mean, all those things, we, we definitely heard it and we definitely took it seriously. But um, I remember talking to Wayne, who's now my, been my business partner now for about two or three years. Uh, well, last year we did a lot of theatres. Uh, we had a, a financier that came on and said, let's, let's do a whole heap of theatres. And we went all around uh, the country. And uh, I said to Wayne this year, we did keep, we, we got a lot of feedback from a lot of people here in Brisbane, said, you hardly did, you hardly did gigs in, in Brisbane. So we said, why don't we just do local pubs and clubs just around Brisbane and, you know, and uh, basically also not only getting back to the, to the fans, because we're Queenslanders, getting back to the fans that have 
um, yep. supporters for all these years, but some of the venues and, and 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 clubs that have supported us when we first started, you know, like it was kind of one of those love your Brisbane tours type of things. <laughs> and when the virus kicked in, it said you can't perform in front of 500 people or more. And I said to Wayne, what a, what a an, an accidental touch of genius or stroke of genius. We weren't going to do theatres uh, this year. We were just new. <laughs> and then the news came in that it was less than 100, then it was nothing. So it became very, very depressing very, very quickly. Hey, but uh, but yeah. the work that we've lost, yeah, we had uh, gigs in Singapore, um, uh, wow. Bali, Asia. Uh, there's a few more that I've actually tried to delete it from my brain. Um, where else are we supposed to go? Oh, London. We were uh, doing some headlining, headlining some gigs in London. And what kind and of um, capacity were these gigs that you were booked for, Johnny? Most of these were festivals. Most of these were, were festivals. So it kind of hurts because um, we worked... We, we, it, 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 and any, any of the entertainers out there will know, you've always got to prove yourself. You've always, you've always got to show people that you're good enough to do the gig. So we're always trying to... We're not just resting back on our laurels going, oh, we'll get employed. You've always got to push hard, work hard. Yeah, uh, whether, mm. whether it's uh, Facebook posts or media or promo, or you're always trying mm. to do your hardest to, uh, you know, what do they call it? Sponsoring ads on all the social media platforms. So it's never, you never just pick up gigs, you know, you're working hard for them. So for us to get gigs in London, headlining festivals, we're like, wow, this is a crazy, this is, and we're all getting older. I mean, I'm, I'm in my early thirties. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, don't let this be a fool you. Anyway. Yeah, uh, fair enough, fair enough. In, <laughs> but no, in, 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 uh, in, in the, the amount of money that we've lost is, is yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, a big chunk of change, as they say. So in, in comparison with Licia being an independent and Scotty being local but all over the place, and Johnny, do you have a team that you work with to put these jobs together or an agency or...? How yeah, does it's that called work? Centrelink. Yeah, right. No, I'm talking <laughs> about the gigs. Now. I'm talking about the gigs. I'm talking about the gigs. I know, I know. No, basically, it's just myself and Wayne. My, my as I said, Wayne's the bass player oh. of my band. So basically, just he, he and I. We, we've we've gone through a lot of agencies and managers, and no disrespect to to any agency or management. A lot of the times, if you, it, it, it's probably best to look after your own backyard, and that's what we found. Probably in the last two or three years, we've had a great bunch of people that have been looking after us over the years. But uh, when you when you're hands on, everything your own, doing your own thing, you yep. know where the money's going, you know what deals are being done, you're speaking directly to the horse's mouth and all the rest of it. So uh, after all these years, we've decided just just to look after ourselves, and we are getting older. I mean, seriously. <laughs> um, and and as far as being in a tribute band, that's all I do. I'm I'm only in a tribute band. Uh, yes. There's only so many. T- there's, uh, there's only so much longer I could be wearing tights and spandex. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, it's, 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 sorry, it's you go, Johnny. Depressing. Yeah, no, very I was depressing. Just say, it's very depressing. But you know, as we were speaking about this off air, I have hit rock bottom on on occasions. So you do, you sort of know how to dig yourself out of the hole. However, this is a brand. This is a whole new ball game. I mean, I yeah, was saying to you. Hell. This is one one year, a couple of years ago, maybe four or five years ago. I was struggling with the work. We couldn't get the work. I was doing. I was in a covers band. I was doing the. I was doing the tribute show. But we just just I, w- there wasn't enough money there to keep a roof over my family's head and pay the bills. So I, I, I started working for Avis, and um, it was actually great. It was actually great exercise. Um, washing cars. I was washing cars with all these other fellows, and I'm still all friends with them today. And when this 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 hit, I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a call if I can get two or three days a week. But as, as my old boss explained to me, I'm putting up everybody. No one's flying anywhere, so no one's going to be renting cars. Yeah. You know, oh, wow. you're saying I feel too. All the, um, uh, I'm a huge uh, sports fan. I love um, watching all the UFC fights and boxing. They call it a pugilist. I'm a, I'm a pugilist. But uh, all these um, sports reporters have all lost their jobs. They've all oh, lost their jobs. So, of course. There's no of course. sport to report about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So it's, uh, it's extremely crazy. And today was the very first day. I went out and I did a few things and just watched how the world has changed. There was almost a security guard in each aisles of my little my little tiny coals. I had to line up. There was a guy sort of saying, "No, no, mate, you can't take two two pasta uh, packets." I mean, who would have thought? <laughs> I mean, the only reason why I'm filming this in this room because all the other rooms of my house are filled with toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, so we, I bet you are. I bet you are. So going back to Licia here, um, 
what are the ramifications that you oh, i think we've just got a massive post here um this is about johnny i think well sorry lisa you just got blocked out there can everyone read that quickly uh wow thanks brad and has everyone got that i can't read it i hope it's good yeah, right. Don't you read it out? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, Alicia from underneath. There we go. All right. It can be a lifestyle choice, guys, i.e. muso income. We are full-time and happy with what we earn. Having said that, we do also receive a small amount from helping out venues with consult, uh, consultancy and booking a few acts. But if you can live within your means and not expect to turn up at a gig in a brand new BMW, then all good. Don't need to fight that traffic or wake up at 5 a.m. on Monday morning. Love your work, all of you, Brad and Debbie Martin. Brad and Debbie, there we go. Oh, you got glasses on. There we go. No, no, I don't use glasses. So, <laughs> okay, so, uh, Licia, so the knock-on effect for you, obviously, um, just the income is missing. But what about the other struggles about, you know, when we go and do a gig, I really enjoy the feedback the auditory and visual feedback from, you know, shredding away and, you know, the engagement. So technically, am I experiencing grief? Because I haven't been able to do a live show and I really, uh, most of you know how I play. So, you know, I really enjoy that feedback. So I'm just wondering, is there any, oh yeah, very good. <laughs> shredding, yeah, that's me, that's me. I'm just, what what kind of things that, are, that you're actually missing besides dollars? Oh, well, yeah, so much. I mean, money is just a small part of care in my life. Um, I should have more care for it, actually. Um, but, yeah, I guess, well, social interaction is a big one. And, you know, being us artists, we like to express ourselves. Um, but just having a sharing, um, a sharing event with others. I mean, stuck at home and, you know, I'm staying with someone who's of an age that is vulnerable, so uh, extra careful. Um, yeah, so it can feel like the world is closing in at times, but, um, you know, this, this, um, live streaming thing is, is my only social outlet, uh, and prob probably many, yeah. I'd say, yeah. um, and being that I happen to play music, um, hopefully some people enjoy it. I, I enjoy playing music, so, yeah. You're a great muso, Alicia, you're a great muso. Thanks, mm. Doug. You too. Yeah. Uh, thanks. <laughs> and what about, uh, Scotty? What are, what's the, some of the things that you're missing? Um, it's this a, was actually from your post, actually. I got that question from your post. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a little bit intangible sometimes. Um, there's definitely there's, it's def, there's definitely a thing. I mean, I, I do a few solo gigs, and um, I enjoy that aspect because I get to play music that I wouldn't necessarily get to play with the band. But the, the, the one thing I miss... I mean, I, I could never just do solo gigs. It would do my head in. I, I, the band thing is, I guess it's that interaction with other people. It's the right. camaraderie, you know, it's the... It's, it's, Loading it's, out helps. It's, it's yeah. like their family. Like the other <laughs> yep. band, basically, are, they, it's, you probably end up, a lot of times, particularly in, the, in when I was like younger touring heavily, it's you, it's basically your family. You spend more time with those people than you would spend with your actual, with your actual family. So you've we... got really close relationships. And, you know, you might fight like cats and dogs sometimes, <laughs> and you know, but it's that's that, which is you know, typically it's a that's a it's a real family thing to do. Can you um, maybe I... let us know of some of the people you toured with as well, Scotty? Um, uh, uh, lots of different people uh, doing support act stuff for everyone from Susie Quattro to Tom Jones to. Uh, uh, shit, I can't think back. It, it, nearly all the Australian bands like Aussie Coral Angels, uh, uh, Little River Band, uh, uh, Midnight Oil, Angel. Uh, I can't think now. Uh, but uh, and then and then playing uh, in a band with a guy called Ray Burton who wrote Iron Woman for Helen Reddy. Uh, wow. And uh, spending two years working with uh, singing, uh, fronting a band called Kakadu with Phil Emanuel. Yeah, oh, Rusty Soul, he's a great player, Phil. Oh man, he was he's he a genius, really. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, That's for you. That was for you. I've done a little bit of um, uh, like one-off things playing. I did a, a done one-off things as a, like a hired gun thing with um, Mark Gable, Tanya Doko, uh, 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 
several other, several others. I, I mean, yeah. I, but those I, who are watching, Scotty's a bit of a legend, and he's like name dropping everywhere over there. So my name dropping nearly went off the thing there. We go. <laughs> but I'm yeah, picking them up. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and that's what you really it's one of those things too where i i mean i i have i've been really fortunate i've had a lot of it's the things have seemingly fell in my lap a lot of times and then sometimes seemingly when they when just when they needed to you know it, it, are you talking about no, women's god or <laughs> oh. no, i just i don't know but i don't know it's one of those things you've got to sometimes go you know it, I do believe to, in in some ways you create your own luck, but but that time doesn't mean it's necessarily going to come your way either. You're right, right. And okay, then maybe we we'll switched it, oh, Johnny, this way. So, what's some other things that you miss about playing live, Johnny? It's the drugs. Um, <laughs> joking. I'm joking. Scott, oh Scott mentioned God. a lot of people. He mentioned a lot. He didn't mention Normie Row though, so. Credibility shot to pieces, mate. Um, I have met Normie Ray, but I haven't. No, I haven't done a gig. I met him. I, I met him at a, an airport. <clears throat> said, Get out of my way. I met him. I met him at a mate's place. Thank oh, you. Oh, very David. good. <laughs> oh my god. Um, all jokes aside, if you look on on, on Scotty's um, Facebook page, you, you put up uh, photos of both those people you mentioned to. So it is. It is. It is quite a. Thanks, Keris. Yep. Um. Oh, it, it really is. It's, it is. It is. Uh, I don't want to sound too melodramatic, but it is lovely meeting all the Queen fans. I mean, they always tell you what songs they grew up with and what they've got married to, and you know, and all that type of stuff. It's um, it is. A, it's a social outing. It, it, when I first started doing, I'm a very nervous performer. I kind of. It's really weird. I've just lately started to to relax more and enjoy it more. But uh, yeah, it is. It's uh, and it, it is as as Scotty said, the camaraderie between. Um, everybody in the in the band, we've had our blues. We've certainly had a few punch ups and uh, and stuff. But I think it it, it builds. Um, I, I think it builds a bond between you, unless those people that you're working with are complete assholes. It uh, will not create a bond. It will create uh, corrosive animosity. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm lucky. I've got a great bunch of guys around me. In fact, whenever they hear me say that I'm a musician, they always go, "Hang on, hang on a tick, Jono." <laughs> You're just a mimic, you wanker. Um, <laughs> or they'll say, hands up all the musicians in the band. Not so fast, John. Not so fast. But uh, they hey, are Pam. great. They really bring the best out of me. And uh, I'm really lucky to have such a great band behind me, uh, except Randall, of course. I don't really like him too much. Um, <laughs> but I'm kidding. He knows I'm kidding. Uh, but no, I do miss, of course... Of course, um, Alicia said that uh, the money is is uh, is a bonus. We love to get paid, and but uh, just you know, there's nothing quite like heading out on stage. It's almost like flying, you know. As as soon as you sort of hit that first note or start singing, it's, it's an incredible feeling, and it is weird. I do miss it a lot. I really do miss it because it's an adrenaline rush. It is. Yeah. So yeah. So luckily, I've got um, you know all, all these wonderful people that are, are doing what we're doing that we can all sort of cry on their shoulders <laughs> yes yeah I, I i agree i really miss being able to do the elbow live so i have to do that by myself at home so you know oh, okay. yeah. on, the, on the guitar but you'll have to actually <laughs> yeah. check that out but um yeah. hey bruce how you going man hey fog so uh going back to lisa Foggy. So bruce Foggy's <laughs> in the room here we go better put him back it up sit down for us once he was fantastic Good old Bruce. He probably knows everyone here. Does everyone know Bruce? I'm hopeless with names. You know. All right. Okay. Bruce is a bit of a legend. Oh, he's a legend. He's a legend. oh there you go. Yeah, Uncle Pete. That's my uncle Pete. So, <laughs> so um, okay. So, what about keep? What are we going to do now? So, um, Licia, what do you do to keep keep on it? You know, I know we were talking today about learning all this technical stuff because to stay ahead of the curve, it's, it's just hard work, right? So. What do you do right now, you know, practicing social media or, well, I guess you can't really go out too far, but yeah, how do, what do you do musically to keep in a good headspace? Um, yeah, so um, I, a few weeks ago when it all, all started collapsing, um, Michelle Fitness, a friend of mine, put out on Facebook, so who wants to do a, a live stream with me this weekend? And of course, I had been thinking, well, I suppose I could do a live stream and 
So that was a bit of a nudge for me. Um, and I was not going to tell many people. Um, and then I rang Pam Hatter. I said, hey, we've got a gap. You should do it. So she did it. That was our first one together. She runs Original Sound Lounge. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I've done four live streams since then. And I'm just learning about lighting and how to not talk too much in between sets <laughs> and to practice a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I've been practicing a bit more and um, writing some songs as well, which has been really, really enjoyable. Um, some days are quite quite dark, especially like, um, you know, and just trying to get my tax return finished. And because I did press the old affected by COVID-19 button, I thought might as well give it a shot. You know, it's not easy for soul traders, but so I'm just filling out the documents for that as well. So basically, yeah, practice writing. I will get to do some recording um, for myself and for others. I'd love to do some virtual jamming. Um, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe I'd like to try and figure out the online workshop thing, but I, I'll cross that bridge. I, I might ask you yeah. how. Uh, you yeah, yeah, it. no problem. Uh -huh. no pro yeah, I'm actually investigating that because I've got some uh, students around the world. And so wow. I used to use Skype. Yeah, I've got students. This sounds crazy, but it's true. I've got students in Germany and America. And uh, I mean, who wants to learn from me? But anyway, it happened. it's a true story. But cool. um, yeah. yeah, but anyway, cutting to Scotty. What do you do, Scotty, to keep in a positive and upbeat mood? Uh, I've, um, I've had, a, like I said, I've had little drips and drabs coming through the studio, which has been keeping me busy, and and it and it stops me from sitting around and twiddling my thumbs for too long and dwelling on how, you know, what's going to happen over the next several months. I suppose, goodness knows how long it's going to be. That's, I think that's the most worrying thing. How long it's going to be? Well, so I've been trying to come up with things that I can work on now, and that hopefully will make my life better once we get out of this but no one knows how, how what's going to happen when we get out of it so i guess it's i mean i'm working on my i i, I love playing i love playing guitar so it's so i i, I try and spend a, a good couple of hours playing every day just because i because i love it and if i don't get a chance to do that it's I get a bit i get a bit um down in the dumps and frustrated by the fact that I, I, I haven't actually done that. I, I guess it's a, it's, I find it a bit cathartic and, um, yeah. and it's also I think, one of the things I, 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 in my mind, I know that if I don't use it, it's that thing. If you don't use it, you lose it. And I know that at my yeah. playing level, if I don't keep, if I don't keep playing and, and it's that thing singing as well, if I don't, if I don't use my voice and, and use my playing skills that it's, um, if I don't maintain them, when we actually get back to gig, I'll be, um, it's going to be a bit scary. Yeah. So I'm doing a bit of that. I, I, I'm, I've been writing some stuff as well. Um, I'm working, I mean, in the, the great thing that is in the studio is I've got a few uh, clients who I've been able to do some stuff remotely, work on mixes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have a couple of, stu uh, couple of uh, clients who um, are just basically singers who really play an instrument very basically and I get to fill in all the gaps and be creative around that and I really enjoy I really enjoy that process of bringing what I what I do to the table and, and enhancing someone else's songs can we name uh, drop your studio can we name drop your studio uh, oh yeah the studio is called the recording room I'm in Burley yeah. head um I still have people I, it's really I did a I, it's, I've done some really interesting things over the past couple of weeks I did a I did a podcast for life education queensland i've done a oh, couple wow. of girls come in who couldn't act their studios who wanted to do phone interviews and had recording phone interviews uh oh wow i've had a, a guy who's a filmmaker who does uh, like comedy skits and stuff and he's come in and done some recording of comedy skits in the studio so and i've got a few more of those sort of things booked in so i'm hoping that we don't get the complete lockdown so i can still have at least one person coming in and, and um, doing stuff in the studio because that helped obviously helps my little bit gives me little bits of income and stuff to get give me give me some cash flow but yeah, um, I, that's that's good because it, there's a crossover with the other arts that need your services right not just musicians well, it's and great. It, and it, it gives me some interaction with the outside world <laughs> right so, yeah that's very well said what about you johnny what do you do to stay in a positive mindset basically masturbating. musically <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> musically speaking, sir. Musically, oh, right. I can't. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't I There's no drummers there, and the lights as well. Oh wow. Uh, no, look, it's uh, it's really quite de <laughs> really quite devastating because uh, we actually thought that this was going to maybe last for you know two or two or three months. But I, as I was saying again to you, we had a little chat 
this afternoon. I think the year's gone. I, I don't want to be the doomsdayer, but I do believe that the, this is not. We're not going to recover. In fact, my my doc because I've got sarcoidosis. It's a it's a um, it's a lung disease. So you, the easiest way to explain really? it is uh, yeah yeah. So wow. my doctor said you, you can't you can't leave anywhere because this disease or this virus attacks the lungs. So uh, I've only got really one good, well, I've got a, a bad lung and one lung that's not great. And I'm on wow. prednisone, all that type of stuff. So I, I'm probably susceptible to it uh, more than any, well, more the same as an elderly person. So Who's um, uh, 30 years old. Yeah, right. I mean, I was a little bit surprised. <laughs> Thank you for remembering. I was, I was a little bit surprised by the whole, I mean, I've, I've got diabetes. And when they were talking about oh. No, talking about the, the virus, it was like, you know, really, really bad for people with heart condition and diabetes. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what the hell? Are... But I mean, I can understand, yeah. Johnny. But that's just with, with the lung problem. I mean, it's, that's... I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, mate. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And what about you, Lisa? Are you at risk of anything? Or... Uh, no, I think I'm pretty good. Um, I'm. My, oh, stop I'm, bragging! Stop bragging! I'm, 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 I'm all clear, and I'm the first to drop. <laughs> um, <laughs> you just got to worry about that, that. You just got to worry about the, the people you live with. Yeah, exactly. That's that's my main concern because um, I'm living mm. with a vulnerable person. I mean, you know, um, who knows? I don't know. I I should be right. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I think no, we're so, all okay. Honestly, I, I do believe. I think everyone's okay. We we just got to follow the guidelines and. You know, do what we can because uh, you know it is, you know, it, it it is one of those things that it's it's scary and all the rest of it. But um, do, does any is anybody here know of anybody who's got coronavirus? Does anybody? No, uh, I don't. Anybody? Does anyone? No, uh, I don't. I know of one person in um, Austria. Uh, oh. uh, so a friend. In Oz, anyone in but, Australia? <laughs> okay, Australia. No. No, I don't. Yeah. No, but that's a good question, though. Yeah, I don't. Really, no. Yeah, I mean, the, the, cases uh, are, the cases are very, 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 very small here, relatively at the moment. So, yeah, and not well. But we were also talking about. Life. Somebody said to me that the um, the Spanish plague, when it hit, it killed forty million. But then there was a second wave. Second that wave, killed, yeah. That killed eighty million. So, of course, oh. I'm not here to scare anybody. And and of course, the Spanish plague was in 1917. I think it lasted till 1920. We're in the we're in 2020, but. It is just so bizarre that we're in this. It's just so bizarre. I think it was it was only a couple of weeks ago. And I said this in a little podcast thing I did a couple of days ago when I was drinking Guinness, and um, <laughs> before you downgraded your beer. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not going to give them another plug. But anyway, they're kind of. Uh, Hang on, they're your sponsor, like, Johnny. You've got to give them a plug. <laughs> Holidays, not the source, the beer. Uh, oh wow! Well, okay. <laughs> $36 a carton. Yeah. Anyway, the little cat doesn't. Get away, get away, get away. So anyway, yeah, I just got up one morning and I, I, I'd, I'd spoken to my, my parents and um, uh, just normal things sort of happened and I didn't have the news on and I just did a bit of a quick tidy up and I thought I'm just going to pop up the shops now and get a few, you know, uh, staple things like uh, <laughs> toilet rolls and whatever. But... But I went up to my little local, and just about everybody was had gloves on and 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 face masks. And I'd forgotten, you know what I mean? Like just for that minute, I'd, or a couple of minutes, I'd was driving up at the radio, you know, playing, and I pulled into the service station. I oh, sorry, the uh, grocery store, and there it was. And I was just like, "Fuck, that's right. That's where we are. That's where we are, and we're going to be here for, yeah. for quite some time." So, who would have well, thought I, that? Um, who would have thought that? Uh, Truck drivers, um, shopping centre, or at least uh, Woolworths and Coles employees and nurses and doctors would be our new heroes. As I said, I always thought it was the Kardashians. So um, <laughs> it's a new world. Yeah, well, I don't doing? know. I mean, I don't even watch the news, so yeah, I don't know. Well, I've been watching I'm it on the internet. <laughs> I just, I wake up, I wake up, I, I look at the news on Twitter. Some uh, Dave Callan, who's a very good friend of mine, who's a comedian. He put up a, uh, oh, a Steve. meme of, hey, Steve. of Captain Picard from Star Trek, and it said, "How we're living in 2020." And it had Captain Picard, and underneath it just said, "Damage report." <laughs> That's kind <laughs> yeah, of where right. We're, okay. That's kind of where we are. You know, As... every morning there's a new. There's a new. Um, it is weird. It is. I probably shouldn't be laughing about it because it, it is very. Um, it is distressing oh. and it's a bit upsetting, but. Um, there's, Here a we are. Hopefully we There's a message from Ben. Ben there says, uh, "My wifey 
Therese works at Rabina Hospital Emergency and had contact with a positive patient two weeks ago. Her test was negative, thank God. Well, it's good to hear. Yeah, very good. So, oh, it's really nice to hear you too, so there you go. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. So um, the only thing that, I mean, I know we're still talking about the virus here, but the multiplying factor, apparently the flu is like 1.4, so 1.4 to the power of 10 is about 28, I believe, but with COVID... It's a multiplying factor factor of three, so uh, that means after three to the power uh, one to the three to the power of ten, and equal equals fifty nine thousand people. So it's. Do you remember? Yeah. You remember the cartoon Charlie Brown? Yes. Remember the teacher when he was talking and. That sounds like a weapon. All right. Well, yeah. I, I, I am a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. It's all I heard. There you go. So yeah, something about a number, and that was the end of me. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, all the people who are watching at home, uh, if you have any questions for these legends, please uh, post them online. There's a few coming through. This is also being broadcast to YouTube. If you look up Doug DeJong on YouTube, it's actually there. Steve's got. Is that a question here? Keris, he was 69 years old. Cool. So what? Oh, <clears throat> doctors and nurses, frontline crew, putting yourself through families. Yeah. Wow. Uh, feeling a bit fed up. I think these selfless people. Yeah. Also, um, I spoke to, does everyone know who uh, Reese Species is? He owns the yep. uh, music shop at Music Express. He's uh, on the phone to Reese today. He was telling me he's actually, uh, was, he was actually going to come on the call tonight. And he may still do. Reese, if you're watching, uh, send me a, a link. Well, send me a message and I'll send you the link. And um, he's actually been working with uh, trucking around uh, by a telephone, that is masks and etc all medical stuff but anyway getting back to music so what do you think so johnny i'm stealing johnny's idea here and we'll start with lisa here again what do you think musicians have to do now to stay relevant what do we need to do because as soon as this thing drops as a subcontractor or whatever you want to describe it as what are we going to do or how are you what are you going to do to remain relevant well we're, we're, we're becoming relevant now by talking to people, communicating with our fellow uh, musicians and, and, and people that are all working it. And it's not just us, it's the roadies, it's the techs, it's the barmen, barmaids, it's all those uh, uh, agents, venue managers, it's all those right. people. I mean, it's, effect, it's just decimated our industry. It's finished. Yep. Yep. Uh, and the, it, it's the uncertainty that keeps me awake at night. We don't know when it's going to be over. That's the, that's the biggest thing is the uncertainty of not knowing how long it's going to go on for. Yep. And what and what about Scotty, do you have any ideas about remaining relevant? Um, I've been putting a lot of time and effort into learning as much I can about streaming but but doing it in a uh trying to trying to work out how to do it in a, in a better quality way with uh multiple cameras and like high end like high end cameras and but also looking at um how to monetize that side of things and not just and not more more to do with not even uh the situation we're in now but ongoing past that once things get back to normal so it can be actually a an ongoing thing to, to set up something like a internet tv station type vibe i mean i've got a i've got a lovely large live room that is capable of holding uh, quite a considerable audience and putting on a large band if, if you know, we've got a nice big stage area with a big pa yeah, and like beautiful, beautiful that'd, room that'd be awesome be so awesome. what I'm, I'm, I'm sort of trying to work out a way. I mean, I had all these great plans of actually putting on live bands playing to a small audience and live streaming it and being able to um, charge a, somehow working out a way to monetize it via a very, very, very small amount of money. So it was actually like less than a cup of coffee. Yep. But Scotty, hopefully, would people would, hopefully would people be prepared to, to pay something like the cost of a coffee to, to watch their favourite live band, whether it was Killer Queen or the Fleetwood Tribute or a, whatever, whatever, you know. But, uh, but Scotty, can, can Scotty. Like Louis, not more. Yes, what's that, Johnny? It, Scotty's absolutely right. People will pay. I mean, as I was saying earlier, I, I love um, uh, all the boxing and UFC and stuff like that. We pay up to $80 to watch a well, pay-per-view event. One, one event, one event. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's I know. Like, well, it's a couple, there'll be a couple of fights, but most of it's crap. You, you, you're really paying for the main event. <laughs> you know, most of it's... when you pay eighty bucks to watch fucking someone someone punch on for twenty seconds and it's all over. Yeah, 
Well, Fair enough. It's, it's, it's physical chess. Let's not get into the whole violence <laughs> thing. <of it>. I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not here to... And, no, I, and I was thinking, um, particularly in this moment now, but the, the, it's, there's a lot of people out there doing the live streaming thing for free, and that's great. It keeps, it, 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 I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to share what we do, and it, it obviously it's that great thing too, where it keeps, it keeps you in um, performance mode. I, I love watching Rob Rhodes do his thing. He, he does a, yeah, Rob, he does a well. He's got <laughs> nicely, and it looks great, and it's, you know, it's that thing of trying to, trying to do what we do and actually make it. Make it a little bit entertaining. Make it, I saw Bruce. a thing earlier on this evening with uh, Pete Northcott with a lovely Terry. Uh, singer, Danny I saw Sydney. that. That was, and yeah. it was great. It was a great really? version of All the Notes song. And I was like, it wasn't necessarily live. It looked like he'd probably pre recorded it and then put it out. But um, obviously, them in two different places with two different cameras. Look, it, and it looked and sounded amazing. So, yes. Um, and it was, yep. So I was just going to say, Alicia, do you have any input on how to stay relevant? Uh, well, yeah, like um, this is what's happening now. I think Johnny just said that. The internet is yes, all sir. we have. This is it. I will never see you people, or not for a long time. So um, I hope to just keep trying to grow some sort of fan base and, you know, likes and emails and uh, for a little old ind independent myself and other independent artists, we keep sharing concerts together, cross-promoting. Um, maybe some different types of streamed gigs. I mean, I'd like to improve the quality, but I don't want to spend all day every day trying to make streaming the best because I also want to make recording and writing and stuff like that too. But it is extremely important, and this is all all we all we have now. Yeah. So I guess... Uh, sorry, go, Johnny. Oh. I, I do have... <laughs> <laughs> this is so confusing. <laughs> <Lady Bunch. laughs> you want to hear the full version? Uh, long no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Johnny, what were you saying? Uh, I was just going to say, um, it's great. it was a couple of years ago, I was invited to appear on uh, France TV for this, uh, it was a lookalike competition. And uh, we're welcoming all different types of people, whether they look like a screen actor or... Anyway, I went on there and I, I came second or something. It was a long time ago. But I had a look around the room like a Bond villain, yeah? And I came up... I came up with an idea that I'm not sure is going to be specifically okay to talk. What's the time? Oh, it's fine. There's going to be some profanity here, but it's going to be all in context. I feel oh, like there we... playing an accordion like Trump does, and that invisible accordion when Trump's speaking. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so there was a, 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 a Sharon Stone lookalike there. There was a Tina Turner. And these were the from all around the world. They looked absolutely amazing. I worked with a guy who looked identical to George Michael, Robbie Williams. They're all very good friends of mine. And I thought... If times got bad, I could start up a company where I pimp these people out to <laughs> as escorts. If things want to go, if things, if things, as Norman Gunston would say, if things turn into silly business or hanky panky, yes, we can. You've got to pay extra for that. But I was going to call the company Fantasy Fucks. <laughs> God. Okay. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? You can invite someone into your home that looks exactly like George. He could, uh, the entree, sing a few songs, and then, you know, uh, a bit of a mattress mumbo. Who knows? Fair However, enough. My mum is watching, by the way. So. <laughs> mattress mumbo. <laughs> she she might sign Michael up for it. For a, price. a variation well, on the horizontal car chart. All right. Yeah, yeah. There was a guy there, I will post the photograph up, that looked identical to Richard Gere. He was absolutely identical. He kind of gave me the idea. He was a policeman in France and he, was, he had a couple of mistresses and his wife found out and he went, well, I'm just going to go with that. And so that's what he basically did. He put in uh, as a, a, an ad, Richard Gere lookalike, open for whatever, and um, I thought I could have them all on board and I'd just be pimping them out as Freddie Mercury. There you I, go. Can't do it. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it, of course, because it's disgusting and beneath me. Yeah. Fair beneath. enough. Fair enough. So, 
about you asked staying. The question. I'm just, I, I mean, if you had <laughs> asked the question, you wouldn't have got that answer. So, it's your fault. Right? Me too. But, but um, I think you've already answered this next question, Johnny. So I might flick it over to Scotty. Um, so we've already sort of lightly discussed alternative ways of generating income with our skill set being a musician. And obviously you have a studio space and, and as you said, you're moving into video right now. So what else can we do, you know? Can anyone do it? I've been doing the, the video, like I'm doing promo videos for bands and stuff for about uh, three years, four years. Oh, okay, cool. I've had that set up for quite a while. It's just one of those things. It's always a work in progress, and I'm always trying to looking at ways to improve it. And uh, but I, 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 it's that thing I've slowly had plans of as time goes by of actually turning it into a live venue of sorts with with a with a with such, an awesome idea, Scotty. such an awesome idea, Scotty. Such an awesome idea. So, yeah. but you know, like it, it's yeah, it's one of those things. It's like it's it, trying to do all of the research of what is uh, what is actually possible and what are the rules and regulations around being able to do that sort of thing. And um, can I just can I just cut in here, Alicia? Are you just are you are you writing these songs and you're just basically performing them yourself, or do you have a band or um, both? I have fans in different areas. See, I think this is where Scotty can actually <clears throat> help not only earn a few bucks for himself, but other. I think solo artists like yourself that write and produce your own songs. See, Scotty, you can make a film clip in his room. You can produce it all there. And I think solo acts at the moment are really original acts. I should say, not solo. I'm talking about original acts that write their own music are struggling. And I think it'd be a wonderful way to sort of because the laws are changing so much we can only have two people is it two people we're allowed to have in our house now or something yeah, this is the weird thing though it's two it's two people if you're going to visit someone from a personal point of view but if you're going to a business yeah the rules are different like you know you that's can't have true that's true so this is one of those things it's a bit of a gray area so i'm if you're coming to work in a studio situation as long as you've got the distancing i've got a 120 square meter room which is quite large and potentially you could divide it by four. Divide it by four. And, that's how many people oh, you can have. Still, still socially distancing correctly, but but then is is that is that yeah? You, know, you can have was it five people come to a wedding, but you can only have two people and, visiting your premises. But then there's you know five hundred people visiting Bunnings any day of the week. So how do they, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a really grey area of what you can and can't yeah. do. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Johnny, well. <laughs> I just realised. I just realised there's actually four. There's actually four people in my house. <laughs> Technically, yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna. I'm just. It's better to be safe than sorry. I'm telling you. So, so, uh, so besides your other uh, fantasy business, uh, Johnny, do you have any other musically related ideas of generating income, well, especially at the level of international? You know. Well, it's hard for me because I don't play an instrument. As I said, I, I'm just a mimic. I just do the the Freddie thing. And I'm, I was looking at doing a couple of... I've been approached by a couple of people that want to do a couple of short indie films and, and, and things like that. But uh, most of those things are free. I, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> um, but a friend of mine across the road is a chef. And he said to me, why don't we do some sort of cooking show on, on YouTube? And I said, well, first of all, it would stop me going crazy. <laughs> and uh, that'd be that'd be cool. So that's we're looking at doing. I got a couple of few other ideas, but it's not they're not money making ventures. It's mainly just. I mean, Scotty said it before. I mean, as a wonderful as a wonderful musician that Scotty is, I think everyone's frightened of losing their shops because we played every weekend. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's one that's 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 that real thing yeah. about being big fit. Yeah, you know? that's, it. that's it. That's it. Well, I must say too, you know, like when people change careers, if they, I don't know, people stop labouring if they get sick of it or they stop getting work so you change careers but so if you're a great muso and then all of a sudden you have to change direction because at the moment you know a business that's actually going viral is like it, the if you're in it right because everyone one needs bigger better faster internet and all you know computer stuff here we've got a 5g question here. apparently 5g <laughs> that's right so is there going to be a hole in the arts that's my question you know with everyone walking away from the arts Oh. oh, sorry. I, <laughs> well, I think everyone already has that, man. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just worried about um, people walking away from it. And I had this discussion with my sister today, actually, about instrumental education, because I'm also in education. 
is that the first thing to go, you know, when times are tough is paying for tuition, you know, of an instrument of some sort. So, you know, with the triangle of any industry, the grassroots are so important. You know, the football thing, you know, everyone from playing six up, six year old upwards, whatever. So I'm just really worried about people walking away from the arts because if it can't support an income and it's really good demographic we've got you know here what, local sorry you, you know go. what the real the real scary thing is is not just people walking away from the arts but there are people are, are going to walk away from most things you know like uh look at all the restaurateurs and all the rest of it that are everyone's no, going to just I don't think people are and they're going to secure away. their finances away from it kicking and screaming <laughs> yes right it's okay not, yeah. you know it's like it's I, I, I i did i did have a uh a little a, a little dream the other day that it, everything had gone back and people were so craving for live entertainment and going out again that uh, that everybody was booked and and and, and enjoying the the, uh, the industry again better than they have ever had before because people have been starved of entertainment they've been locked up in their own homes so as soon as it was as soon as we had it I think I think the dream was actually there was an antidote found by um, oh, really? Lumi Run and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm, he's in a good light, though. I'm not taking a piss. Yeah. He's in a good light. Um, the whole thing had been it. It, I, it was just a. It, it was just a dream, obviously. But it was just. I think once this stops, everyone. We took it for granted going out. We took it for granted going to a restaurant and all the rest of it. So I think people will be absolutely craving for entertainment. And um, you know, let's let's just hope. Let's. It's it's just the uncertainty. We just don't know when this is going to stop. As I said, today was a very frightening day. Watching the, the, uh, the, the just the just the, the different way I had to shop today. It was bizarre. So let's hope it all gets better yeah. at some point. I just got I'm a sure. question. I've just got a point here. Uh, Rob, where's Robin's Robin's comment? So here, here we go. People don't learn guitar now to play in a band. So, is what do you think about that, Lisa? Being a guitarist, do you agree or disagree? Uh, is that because I play video games? <laughs> guitar <laughs> video games um yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, funny, it, it, there's, it, it's funny the statistics about uh, like there's less guitar in music than there ever was before in popular music right like, very true guitar sales, true. Got, guitar sales yeah. are greater than they ever were in the past so there's actually there's actually there you uh, go terry um, yeah yeah so yeah, guitar sales are going through the roof. I mean, it's a, a lot of people are learning how to play guitar. It's just not necessarily being used in popular music. I dare say that at some point down the track, there will be possibly a major resurgence in that sort of thing. It's one of those things that at the moment, a lot of popular music um, is, in, in, is in, basically revolves around people sitting at a sitting at their laptop computer and churning out stuff made with like it's like Lego music. There is a lot of talented people doing it. But it's basically how can you do it the easiest, quickest, simplest way? Right. And, uh, you know, there's not, not I mean, the people that are doing it, I think, actually have great skill on it, that, that are making it, doing it very successfully. But it's just being done. And it's, it's, the guitar is not, is not a focal instrument in popular music at the moment. Well, they just, uh, slightly off subject, but they just named the top 10 DJs in the world. And I'm so incredibly proud of my 11-year-old daughter. Her iPod <laughs> come in third. <laughs> I'm so happy. Just I couldn't be prouder. Just a gag to all the DJs out there. Don't get too fucked off. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm more in the blues rock roots world. Um, and, yeah, guitar is a pretty focal <laughs> instrument in that oh, scene. Yeah. So, um, but totally pop music, what you're saying, yes, uh, for the young and the people who are listening to pop music, but there's still people out there who listen to um, rock roots and blues and really? all that sort of thing. It's just, it's just not the uh, sort of stuff you're going to hear in mainstream media, unfortunately. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Yeah. It's like, it's like when, came out with, it's when Gary Moore came out with Still Got That Still Got Blues album, blues was dead and buried. No one was listening to blues. And then Gary Moore came with that, out with that album and all of a sudden everyone was into the blues. So there's yeah. things go in cycles. Like mm. there will probably become a time again when, when uh, guitar is a is a focal point of pop music. It's just not happening at the moment. Yeah, well, uh, there's a lot of other things like with learning an instrument. Sorry, I'm actually trying to navigate. Debbie, I'm uh, talking to you live as well. Uh, I think I missed. 
missed a comment from Debbie, but I was I thought I'd put them all up, but I'll have a look at that in a sec, Deb. But with learning an instrument, there's a lot of other disciplines that happen with learning an instrument. So with I can say this from teaching students is that first thing is about, you know, being aware of your belongings, you know. So when students are learning an instrument, they bring an instrument all the time. So they actually take notice about their surroundings to bring in it. Also the discipline of about going through a frustrating time and you learn um what do you call it? I can't remember the word. Uh, resilience. Resilience is the word. So that when you, you know, every musician knows you're going to suck at the beginning. So you just have to keep pushing through to get and it done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and sometimes at the end. Oh, oh, okay. it was like, if only I could play this one particular song, it'd be amazing. And then a week or so later, you're playing it and you're going, oh, that wasn't so hard. Okay, next I'm going to learn this. And if I can possibly learn this, it's going to be amazing. And then you, then you achieve that goal and you go, well, that wasn't so hard, and it's and that's 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 all part of that, that learning curve. Of, and then the, 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 then you get to that point where you realise the more you learn, that's true, Steve. Yeah, so much more to learn. <laughs> yeah, the more uh, the more you know, the less. Sorry, the more you learn, the less you know. <laughs> yeah, um, some I'm just that's pretty true. I'm Thanks, just getting Steve. everyone's. Uh, I just uh, oh. get everyone's uh, <laughs> thing up here. I just want to. Uh, don't tell me jamming is dead. Oh, Bob, I hope not. No, no, no. I'm just going to quickly scroll through these comments if there's any more questions here. Uh, Gary Moore modernized it. Uh, that's from Debbie. Um, four years play as any. Does everyone go? Oh, yep. Cool. Uh, music cycles. And I've just. Yeah, that's good. Scotty, that's for you. And Remco. So Doug learning music is like martial arts. It's very true. It's a discipline. I just got to go up to this uh, comment very of true. Debbie. Debbie made before, and if we just talk about this, sorry, my multitasking uh, failed me. So here we go, Deb. So, okay, if you say so, though, no one knows who's in the house, who's coming into contact. Oh, so this is about COVID. So yes, I was sad that our gigs hit a brick wall, but as a front person of, for our band, and obviously we do the duo too. I'm always in people's faces, and they're sweating all over me all night. I'm kind of happy in a way that it breaks uh, were put on us. All right, so that's kind of a um if i'm interpreting interpreting made up a new word interpreting. translating translating <laughs> the um that this might be a good time to just have a chill of whatever you may be doing and you know put in perspective of are you really doing a daily grind so that might be a good question to go around table is are we maybe looking at this as a good uh way to have a break and um count count the beans and maybe think about what you're putting your time and effort into johnny I'll go first. I am a full-time musician. I do this uh, full-time, hence the full-time musician. Um, so it's my only, it's, it's all I do for a gig. It's there. Uh, Debbie's got a point in some, in some ways. Uh, there was a time last year where I was starting to feel a little, a little burnt out, a little bit jaded. And, you know, as, I, as I've said before, it's very hard to put on the, the yellow jacket and bounce out as everyone's favourite Freddie Mercury when you're having a shit day, but every performer goes through that. Everyone yes. does it. <clears throat> um, mm. But I've, I'm, I'm acting. I've got to pretend that I'm... People have paid their money to see a, a, an impersonator or what it might have been like to see Freddie. And, of course, it is hard. And we, were, we, we did almost 100 gigs last year, which is, as I said, I think the real Queen have done like, some phenomenal amount of uh, wow. gigs. But um, yeah, look, it, it, it may be it, it, it may be cool. I wouldn't want to break for two months or a month, but uh, yeah. I think we just want to keep going back to that one word, uncertainty, because uh, I'm not sure what um, I think Debbie said she was a, mu a musician herself, or uh, the yeah, uh, front that's uh, of the band. she runs a site called Pub with No Fear with Brad. So you need, need to check that uh, out okay. if you're watching. Yep, I think Debbie I've Martin. actually joined that page. I think I've actually jumped, joined that page. Yeah, I but, think um, they're going well. They're going I, well. I agree. I, I agree. She has a point, but I mean, we, this is this is the only. Uh, and for me, I'm not a musician. I can't just pick up a guitar. Or I can't just pick up uh, an instrument. It was just. It, it is basically what it is. And a lot of uh, front hey, men Jerry. and my, uh, they're in tribute acts. <laughs> are, are, are that we're just that. That is who we are, and that's what we do, and that's how we make a living. But mm. um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's one of those things. I, I I love what I do. And I really do miss. I, I miss doing it. It's like. Yeah. I, it's a yep. the live performance as aspect of, of, of playing an instrument. It's that thing you can sit. I mean, I do still love playing in, in the studio and, and, and just for my own personal pleasure. 
that's a great well, and wonderful thing too. And I, like I said, I find it quite cathartic. But that's a very different thing from a live the live performance aspect of it. And there is a there is definitely um, the great thing about it. I guess it's that thing like live streaming. It's um, the thing about doing a live performance is there's no safety net. Right. It's like there's a real no gig, right? In a studio yeah. no, nowhere to hide. There is nowhere to hide. That's exactly <laughs> correct. And there's a certain amount of adrenaline that comes with that. And there's a certain amount of performance energy that comes with that that you don't get from any other experience. Yeah. Have you and guys done live streaming and I've missed it by any chance, Scotty? <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Scott, have you done a live stream gig Congrats. and I've missed it by any chance? No, I haven't done one yet. I'm, I'm, Scott, I'm, you need to do one. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm, a lot of people are at me. Going, <laughs> you need to do one of those. You need to do one. It's going to be awesome. So, um, I've got a few, a few coming. I'm just trying to put a few things in place so that um, I can maybe put my own special little bent on the whole thing and make it entertaining so it's just not me. And that's exactly up. right. That's exactly right, Scotty. I put up a post a couple of weeks ago sort of bagging. I didn't bag. I was triggered. I, I just lost, this from I lost all this work and I saw a couple of people immediately going to PayPal yeah. and playing for tips and stuff like that. And I was, you know, I, I'm That's the first to admit if I've done something wrong because I'm sure that would have angered a, a few people. But um, it, it's exactly what Scotty said. If you're going to do it, make it make people that are tuning, make it look like a gig. No, yeah. You know what I mean? Don't be playing from your bathroom or something like that. Make it look like a gig. And people <laughs> will will uh, contribute a bit of money. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <whatever you're laughs> But okay. yeah, go to, go to, go to, go to, go to a bit of it. Every night and watch Brian, Brian May put up a new, a new video of, here is me playing the solo from Behemoth Rhapsody. And they're going, fuck, how am I going to compete with that? I yeah. know. I know. I've seen yeah. that too. And, well, and um, Roger Taylor's doing the drum lessons as well. But uh, oh, it's all wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I explained it on see my Gad, show. See Gad sitting at a fucking table playing drums on a fucking table. Like, and oh, there you I go. think that... I think that's a good point. What you both both just said about Brian May and Roger Taylor is that the the point is is that it doesn't matter what level you're on, everyone's in the same boat. Like no one's doing any we live are. gigs. Yeah, yeah. So they obviously obviously have to come get income from a different stream. But we have another guest who's just about to join. Uh, her name's Ray Lee. So she's a singer songwriter as well. So hopefully she's got some questions prepared for these for this is she little panel. Is she coming on the, the live feed. I just got. Yep, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, here she goes. Right. There she is. <laughs> there you go. So, how are you going, Ray? Yeah, I'm okay. So, you just did a uh, a live performance today, tonight yeah, at seven o'clock. Didn't look like I was at a pub because I don't live in a pub. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, and do you know these guys like and girls? <laughs> all right, all right. And so, do you know Scott and Johnny and Alicia? No, I haven't. Lovely to meet you guys. Thanks for so having me. So, do you want nice to do you want to maybe quickly explain what you do and and maybe ask the question you would like to ask? Sure. Um, so, I'm, I'm an original singer songwriter, and for 15 years, Ooh. I just wrote songs for myself. And uh, last year, I went to Nashville. I had done a few songwriting retreats and worked on that, but I'd never performed. And started performing about six, seven months ago. Um, with Debbie and Brad um, at their open mic and things like that. That's how I met Doug and a lot of other people from the Gold Coast. And I just started releasing music this year. So I've had three singles out now um, with another seven to come. And, and, you know, so like I'm just starting and I'm going to launch it and have this, you know, album launch and release my music for the first time ever. Um, yep. And then everything's been shut down. <laughs> so like, thanks. It took me 15 years to have the courage to do this. Now the world's like, no, you cannot do this. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Like, I mean, I was just following, you know, a lot of um, courses I've done, they've said, pick an artist that you love and do what they've done, you know, do what they did. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. I'll record my stuff and then I'll have a launch party and all this sort of stuff, which is what everyone has done up until now. And, and I, now think you, like, I, I think you, I can't. I think you can still think... do the same thing and just take it online. Yeah. Okay, the hardest part about doing stuff online is how you market it. And if you've got no funds to market, that makes it really difficult. That's a good well, question. That's a good really question. Yeah. So well, maybe... It's, uh, funds, it's knowing where to put those funds as well. That's a big challenge. Yes. Because you yeah. can throw money down the drain. 
So maybe if we go if we go around, uh, Licia, how how would you spend your money wisely for marketing? How do you spend your money? Um, sometimes I'll get advice from industry marketing people, um, which is probably time that I that did that again. Okay, so, so you just check in with um, a professional. Yeah, I check in with industry people. And Johnny, how do you like market internationally? Because you're actually marketing to a market you're not on the ground in, so you have to rely on people. I, right? I, I, I have to answer this differently because I'm not an original act, but I do know a, a few original acts, and the, the first thing they did was befriend other um, successful original acts who, who are more than happy to give their um, advice on and what to do. And it's a lot harder being an original act, and uh, as I said, I'm just a mimic and we do what we have to do. We still have to promote ourselves and all the rest of it, but uh, oh, to be an question. original act, I have a few friends that are, uh, more than a few actually, that write their own music and... They did the right thing. They just struck up the courage and sent off some emails to these big artists, management companies, and asked. And um, a lot of the times, if they if their material was good, the agent that they were approaching to get contact to that artist would listen to their to their music. So there's there's windfalls and downfalls, but I think the best thing to do is don't spend any mar money until you've spoken to a few people that can direct you in the right area of where to spend that money or but uh, talking to other successful artists who have done it tough, who have come up busting their ass to get noticed yeah. and, and get their material out there and work hard and, and all the rest of it. I mean, a lot of original artists, that mates of mine, have had to do so much work for free. But mm. back in the day, you could you could kind of do that. But now you, everything's changed. And, uh, but that would and, be funny. And Johnny, just that question about how do you market to a territory you don't actually live in? So if you fly to London or the States, because I know we were talking off air before, how do you market on the ground there? And obviously, it's different because you're impersonating Freddie Mercury, and yeah. there's sort of there's it already brand awareness. Well, it's yeah, it's com it's completely different. I mean, we've been around now for about seven or eighteen years, and uh, we've we've kicked some goals. And I guess people, when they're putting on festivals, they're looking for people that cool. uh, have got uh, credibility in their act. You know, whether we're a tribute or not, they want to know if we if we've cut the mustard. And um, a lot of the times, uh, that's how we've got our gigs. But in saying that. Um, We've heavily promoted ourselves through all the social media networks, uh, YouTube and all the rest of it. So if we hadn't have done that, international agencies and festival uh, organisers would have seen it. So yeah. see you later, bro. See you. So I think the key thing is is using every social media platform that, that we have as an original artist and sure. all the rest of it. Because even though we're a tribute act, we took full advantage of all these free social platforms, full advantage yeah. of them, you know. And that, right. and that helped because people saw it. And, yeah. and we're lucky because Queen fans would share it and all the rest of it. But it basically, you've got to have a really good network of family and friends when you're a original actor to really help so, you get, get it out there, you know. So a question would be, uh, well, I'll actually go to everyone, but I'll just ask Johnny right now. So when you guys finish, when you finish your gig, Johnny, do you step off stage and when you're allowed to go near the audience without a mask? Did you actually physically, you know, engage and do face-to-face -face contact with your punters so that it's not just a name brand, it's actually a personal connect? Yeah, of course. And I always give a – even when I'm performing, I always give a wink back to the audience. I'm not Freddie Mercury. You know, it's, it's, it's something that I've developed over the years to – you know, I think any tribute act has the responsibility of people coming there to see that, you know, the audience knows that I'm not Freddie Mercury. I know I'm not Freddie Mercury. But at least at the end of the night, I want people to walk away with, you know, that was a pretty full-on concert. Maybe that, that's maybe what it would have been like to have heard them. But we all know what's going on. I always meet everybody afterwards, like I said at the very start of this post, just have a chat with people. And I, I don't walk out in character. I walk out as myself. And uh, a lot of the times I allow a little Johnny Blunt's uh, sense of humour to come through <laughs> because um, there's <laughs> one pretty big thing. And I can't help myself anyway. But I always yeah. go and just chat with people. Just chat with people. Mainly the chats are thank you for coming out and spending right. a bit of your time and money to watch us. Because as I always say, if you hadn't have come out and watched us, we'd be at home watching House Rules. And nobody <laughs> wants to watch that. <laughs> That's true. Well, I think, yeah, probably with marketing, uh, the experience that I had, especially in America, um, you get you get like one minute to do your thing and if you don't blow their mind you know you've missed your opportunity you, whatever you I would the have first 30 seconds, I, I, I mean, 30 that's, seconds. That's, that's an hour a minute an hour 
<laughs> okay. All right. Daylight saving. Thirty seconds. So, yeah. But may, well, maybe I that. Packages to get up for bands for quite a while, and it's one Good of those. Good point. Always really oh. difficult. Oh, sorry. It's always really difficult oh. because that first fifteen seconds that people will see because people are scrolling. And I'll go, oh, right. look, you know, look at it for ten or fifteen seconds at the most, and then and if if you can't suck them in in that ten or fifteen seconds, they're scrolling on to the next thing. That's it's a it's a it's a really um it's a challenge. Well, that's right. And, right. and the only defence I have it's to say with trip, the only defence I have to say of tribute bands, even though we're a tribute bands and we're all just mimics or whatever, we do have competition. So we've got to somehow find a way to. To yes, our right. Our yes, you know, yeah. We've still got to find a way to do that. But most, so of, right. most of my band members have all tried solo careers. Every single one of them in my band have have done that. So, um, does yeah. that help, Ray? Does that help with your question there about marketing, uh, Ray Lee? Yeah. Go your advice somewhere else. There is. There are. Yeah. 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 Someone who's done it. Someone who's done it. Later, yeah. Ray. Let's talk I, later, Ray. We're gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. You can there are. We can actually say a lot more. Yeah. Oh. So, um, it costs money. It's one of those things. That's. That's you know, that thing of if 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 you don't actually have the skills to market yourself, there are people that can help. They do cost money, but you've got to think if you do. You believe in yourself, and are you willing to invest that money in yourself with someone who has the skills who can give, deliver the goods. That's, I mean, it's a it's a fine line. It's a, it's a really very tough. true, very true, Scotty. And in, the, and in this world where we're not making an income, it's like you're, you're tough. You're yeah, very really. true. You've got to set up a budget. Though. You've got to set up. Yeah. You've got to speak to advertising and marketing people and get their price and go because we did that too. We we wanted yeah. because these marketing people can put you as in, into as many different places as that as as they can, but those places that they wish to put you into, those people have got to be willing enough to go well. Who's this person? And even though you're spending money, so it's it's a difficult thing. Friends I'm and a... family with my my original my my friends that have done original music, it's their friends and family that have got themselves where they are today. Casey Barnes, you know, like yeah, Casey he's a, he, look at him go. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, hey, and, and hey, if you want to talk to someone, talk to him. You would have invested quite heavily with marketing people. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and it, it, it makes a big difference. And Actually, so maybe. Having, having someone with, with those dedicated set of skills. Because you can't be, as an artist, you cannot be every, you cannot be the accountant, the publicist, the musician. The, you know, you, you have to Spot be able on. to, you have to, you have to actually have a team of people to look after those things for you. And it's, I totally you know, believe that. Yeah. Unfortunately, that costs a little bit of, can cost a bit of money, but it can be money well spent. Yeah. Uh, and Licia, um, Besides asking people, like, have you actually invested in anyone or recommend anyone on anything that we've just been talking about? Um, yeah, I think it's really important that you do have an understanding of what each of those roles do. And, and I do pretty much do everything myself. Um, however, I do spend money at, at times in different different areas and I have to pace that out because you know like yourself independent artist self-funded and it's so easy to just splash a pile of money here and splash a pile there and then it's gone like that and then you're climbing yep. up that financial hill again and again so I think it is yep. really important and then you know what you're hiring them for so it's like I, I want you to do like can you do this job and and I will continue working with you um because, yeah, however, you know, look how successful I am. So I don't know if that's helpful or not. Um, yeah, I, you know, but this is a time to look within and, and make a new promotion and maybe find other people to work with. But I really think it's important that you have a, an understanding on ev everything of your business. Um, but, you know. I think um, I was actually talking to Pam today. I, th I know that Pam's listening. Uh, we might have another streaming of about being and maybe scotty you could get on this one about being uh marketing a uh, socially social media fit i can't remember the word but just having your act together in what what you need to promote blah 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 but I guess it's just, you know, treating it like a business yeah exactly and i uh, and i there's think music, and then there's the business <laughs> yes yes right, exactly well said. well said two there's two there's two schools that are happening here yeah but i must say from my experience, biggest artists are now directly accessible. Like they've all got Twitter accounts, they've all got you know Facebook, uh, Tumblr. I don't even know what Tumblr is. I thought someone fell down the stairs. And yeah, yeah. 
you know. Uh, Boy, Boy George wrote a song about it. Really called? I'll tumble for you. I'll tumble. <laughs> <laughs> right, there you go. The um, So what I'm saying is that I think for marketing, it's personality. So even like right now, pe- we're all being judged for our personality about how we talk about things, how we judge about things. So, you know, um, I think just any kind of media you need to put out, you know, you just need to keep putting it out. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Any more questions, Ray? Regular output. Yeah. Uh, no, that was um, really helpful. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to answer my questions. That's all right. That's cool. Any um, any more points from anybody else or any anyone who's uh, watching? Hey, Deb. Oh, I don't judge. <laughs> oh, everyone knows the musicians look because I... You know, everyone. You know, as soon as they come in and they start crossing their arms, you know, that's the guitar. That's the guitarist look. You know, so you you know about that. <laughs> the guitar police. The guitar police. The guitar police. There we go. I, here we go. Here's a question. I'm not a great muso, but our band is so busy due to the business marketing side. I spent a ton of time, definitely, as a business. Okay, cool. So maybe if we might wrap this up very and the next. Well, I want maybe one minute, uh, one hour thirty, over done and dusted. But what's the best thing that you can spend your money on? And we might start with uh, Ray. What's the best thing you've spent your money on so far in your music career? Uh, the, re- the recording for sure. Recording? Yeah. yeah. I don't. I, I um. I write the song and the melody, but I get help with the recording and, and mastering. And um, without that, I, I mean, I wouldn't have anything to release or promote my music. So. Cool. And. And Licia? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. There's so much to spend money on. But I suppose good film clips and um, good mixing and good mastering and yep. good drum tracking. <laughs> good drum tracking. Yeah, okay, cool. And Scotty? Um, uh, oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very tempted to take the piss out of this answer. <laughs> well, oh, well, you can if you want. That's cool. No. Um, I, mean, I actually... The, the, Investing investing time and money in recording has been the uh, I, I I guess the, you know it's probably the best thing you can do like, and it's such a great learning it's such a great learning experience when you're recording like you right. learn a lot about yourself about your own skill right. doing, doing, doing your recording process. Yep. So yeah, cap- capturing the art and okay. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the whole the whole between between writing. And the recording whole, that whole process. There's, it is a real. It's a. It's like I said. You learn a lot about yourself and your own abilities, but you also learn. You, know, you learn about where your strengths and your weaknesses are, and it's a. It's a real growing. It's a real growing experience. The whole recording process. Hey Chris. Yeah. And what you about know, yourself? Oh, sorry, yeah, you go. Great thing. And what about uh, Johnny? What have, What's the best thing you've spent your money on in the music industry career? Uh, I Mu- music, music. Music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why, why are you clarifying your questions? Uh, no, very good thing. Uh, no, I think the uh, I never used to use uh, for a very long time in ear monitors, and uh, I invested a uh, in ear monitors. So that would be the only real, real and an esky uh, portable. Um, I'm just kidding. But in ear monitors would have been the best thing that I've ever. It's been wonderful for me. Yeah, because I'm going deaf these days as I'm getting older. It's hard living in the time that we're living, especially when you're in your early 30s, as I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but any monitors, any monitors would be the easiest thing. I won't do any gags with that. So there you go. Okay, fair enough. And uh, actually, with your in ear monitors, is it just the the you know this bit that you actually have? Because like traveling internationally, you would have different power circuits, or do you just get a converter to plug it into your receiver a converter yeah if we do any international gigs i always ask you know have you guys got something over there so i can just bring my buds because i have yep. done a couple of uh, overseas gigs and i brought the whole thing and they were like oh we don't have a converter and all the rest of it so yeah but most of them most of them do yeah so just but, a, um, a... and most of those most of those things like uh, the, the high-end it, 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 like electronics these days have uh, switchable automatic switchable um power supplies anyway so Right, true. It's not a difficult thing to take electronics so and have it compatible. Very true. Well, very true. I would say, um, book us in, Terry. Here we go. Sorry, I've got some uh, comments I haven't been uh, 
putting it up here. I would say the probably the best thing that I spent the money on was uh, instrument and you know and also lessons. I've actually spent. I would actually hate to think how much money I spent on lessons. So um, I actually cherry pick some gurus in the states, and I'm addicted to learning. I can't help it. Um, mm. Yeah, so me- I guess in a, in a word, mentorship. Like you could use the word teacher or whatever, but studying under somebody who's actually evolving because very well said. If, yeah, good if you if you study under someone who says, "Yeah, I know it all," then you stop learning. So absolutely, yeah, I just can't oh, help. Like, like, yeah, the more you learn, the more you realize this. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you just have to. But um, all right, well, we might um probably wrap it up there so thank you for that but we might just quickly go around if everyone can please tell us your socials of some descript and so if you're watching please um make sure you follow these guys so ray do you want to go first what's your socials that people can check out uh i'm ray lee aus on, um, and that's on oh. at ray lee aus <laughs> thanks yeah right okay cool i just might mute, mute lisa lisa sorry there we go. That's all right. Rock and roll. John, Johnny did Johnny did something like that just before on air. Dropped his phone. It did a few cartwheels. I thought I was sick. You know. And uh, and uh, Scott, well, what's your? Uh... <laughs> so Scotty, what's your socials? Uh, uh, Recordingroom.com.au, uh, theaccidents.com.au. Uh, uh, on Instagram and Facebook, it's Scott Watt, uh, Scott Watman vocals guitar. Or I oh mean, I don't know. Can you put Look it me up? You can find me anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or when the when this video is finished, if everyone on panel can go, we go into the comments and just load it up with your social. So, what about you, Alicia? Um, well, my website is lucyandlouise.com, and that's my that's you push it my forward. name. Push it forward. And there you pronounced go. it correctly, Doug. Licia. Sorry. Um, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. One job. No, you you pronounced it correctly. I did. Okay. You, awesome. You did. Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got Facebook, Instagram, um, and .com. But please join my mailing list. Have a listen to my music. And uh, you can join my mailing list. So I've got a gig this Sunday at midday. I'm streaming. Chill out. Set, light jazz, light blues, acoustic tunes. Midday from my Facebook page, Licia Louise. And and awesome. hopefully some people who are not musicians will watch it as gonna, well. I was going to check it out. I was going to check it out. That's what I wanted to talk about. But maybe yeah, I want to oh. wanna reach audiences that aren't other musicians. <laughs> yeah, I want to play to some people like who have jobs. Um, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, well, you can. You want to make that point? Oh, actually, we'll finish the socials and we'll come back to that. I think someone's uh, got to. Or... Yeah. I'll just mute you. See if it's you. Keep talking, Alicia. Hello. I don't. Hello, I'm talking. Okay, Johnny, your socials. John, Johnny, are you there, Johnny? Okay, so Have we lost Johnny. him? Yeah. I, I think he's on it. Johnny. I think it's Johnny that uh, <laughs> looks like you're in a Disney movie called Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny. Yeah, we. Oh, Johnny didn't make it. So, uh, so log back in, Johnny. <laughs> we lost Johnny. <laughs> He's probably just started his new uh, secondary income, but um, thanks. Oh, here we go. We got so yeah. Just with uh, my socials, it's uh, dougdijong.com and um, Facebook. This is where it's been streamed, and also Doug Dijon Music and on YouTube. Check it out. But um, I just want to say thank you to everyone on panel. I have no idea. We've just lost Freddie Mercury. Got no idea. But he's the character. But thank you all for your time and effort. But you can please stay on as I end the broadcast. So and there we go. So thanks. Uh, there'll be another broadcast very soon. I'm sorting it out and uh, I'll announce it. Thanks again. See you all again next time. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Ciao.